Very quickly, five forgotten facts about that first Thanksgiving, which can inform our gratitude. Number one, the pilgrims were a really tough group of resourceful travelers, but they were totally unprepared to survive in the American wilderness. They had, of course, successfully evaded British government soldiers and authorities who wanted them harassed and hounded out of their theological convictions. But they were willing to suffer for their convictions, and they were really familiar with suffering. They migrated to a difficult cultural situation in Holland and then decided that building a nation from scratch might offer better opportunities for liberty and justice, especially for their own children. But then in prepping for life in a complete wilderness prior to the trip, they, they, did, they didn't do it well. They knew it would be life-threatening. They were willing to take the risks and they prepared the very best way they knew how, but they knew very little. When they anchored in Cape Cod, they caught only one fish. It was, a, it was a bay teeming with fish, but they caught only one fish in the first four months they were there. The seeds they brought to plant for food, they were blighted by humidity, humidity and ruined on the ship. One, one of the first common houses they built on land burned down in an accident, forcing them back aboard the wet and unhealthy Mayflower. That's where they had to live even, even longer. Point number two. They died from scurvy and pneumonia all winter long, that, all that first winter long. Now they all had scurvy from being more than two months at sea, and they were even then more months without fruits and vegetables in the wilderness. And then, add to that the previous months being homeless and without good food in England. Some had lived on the Mayflower several months before sailing, as all arrangements were being finalized for the trip. And so that first winter, approximately, one pilgrim died every other day for the first three months until half were dead. Sometimes two or three died in a single day. And during that time, they were so weak, only six or seven out of the entire group had the strength to even walk around. And on these fell the duties of getting firewood for the others, tending those fires, taking food to the others, cleaning bedpans, washing soiled clothes and, and linens, dressing und undressing the weak. And, and then in trying to dig graves in the frozen ground. And in whatever time was left, those who could tried to build more houses. They only had seven by the time spring came. Now that's point number three. When spring finally did come, the pilgrims were visited by benevolent Indians of the region, including Squanto, the only survivor of his Patuxet tribe. Squanto stayed then and lived with the pilgrims from that day on until the day of his death. He became their friend. He was something kind of like a county extension agent. He was their professor of American agriculture, and he was part of the Pilgrim family. He spoke good English for reasons that would make a really great movie. Several years previously, here's the story, he was kidnapped by an English businessman named Hunt. He was sold as a slave in Spain. Some Catholic monks bought him and began training him to live and think like a free man. And somehow, Squanto made it to England and learned good English and the ways of the British and the ways of maritime business until he could catch a ride on a ship back to North America. And when he finally arrived at Cape Cod, he found his, his hometown, his home tribe, he found that the entire tribe had been wiped out by a plague. And they, the scientists think now it was leptospirosis. And had this not happened, the pilgrims would never have been able to settle Plymouth because Plymouth was Patuxet land, and the Patuxets would have killed the pilgrims, but that one survivor, Squanto, helped the pilgrims make full use of all that land which had been cleared by the Patuxets, and it became a bountiful garden, which amazed all the other tribes of Massachusetts. So number four, in five short months, the pilgrims went from conditions of sickness and starvation to the condition of overabundance of food security. And this is what they were celebrating. And it was not just a meal. It was a solemn commemorative gathering of thanksgiving to God, lasting several days. It was called just a mere 10 months after the pilgrims explored Plymouth in an icy cold December. They were cold, they were sick, they were miserable. And that brings us to the last one, number five. This first Thanksgiving, was a mark of genuine, sincere faith in a real and personal and a kind and a loving God. It was formal acknowledgement of God's mercy and grace to them. They were not bashful or shy about acknowledging this and proclaiming this. This was not a superstitious reaction to good fortune. 
It was a mature faith, faith that they had, which marked their lives from days past and into the future. This, this mature and informed faith had grown over time. It kept, them, it kept them fighting for their freedom when they were being chased down by agents of the state in England and being chased out of their jobs and their homes, living as homeless fugitives for years and being laughed at by the politically correct. They were being stolen from and abused by the mob until they regrouped in Holland. And it was there that they made a plan in faith to set up the foundations for a free society by taking new ground in the new world. So check the notes below for source documents on first-hand accounts that are rarely quoted by teachers or historians.